Yo, what is up everyone? It is The Beast. Welcome back to the channel, The Beast On. If you see this face, which I know is a little bit uh, startling to see, if you hear this voice, do me a favor, subscribe to this channel. Subscribe to this channel, hit the little bell so you're notified when new videos are up, and hit me up on the social at Miami Radio Beast. But I really want you to subscribe to the channel. It would mean a lot to me. I want to get to a thousand subscribers. I had a bet with my son, which I have lost. The bet was that I would get to a thousand subscribers on YouTube before he got to a three thousand subscribers on the TikTok. And uh, as of the recording of this video, which uh, I don't even know what day it is, man. It's sometime in August. Let's just twenty twenty. Uh, he is he has gone over the three thousand mark on TikTok. <laughs> Props to my kid, Zach London. And uh, go follow him on TikTok. He is, he's got great stuff going on, good material, good dad jokes, good uh, transition videos. He's got all the trends going. Go follow him on the TikTok at Zach, Z-A-C-H, randomizing things. But congrats to the Zachary, a.k.a. Mazel Tov, to uh, Zaharia. Yeah, there we go. All right, so what is this video about today? It is about a subject that is going on right now as of the taping of this video, which is uh, we have a little bit of a mutiny, a little bit of a situation up at Florida State in Tallahassee. I say up in Tallahassee because I'm down here in South Florida, so that would be north of here. Yeah, directions. How about that? Um, basically, the wide receiver room is uh, calling out the coaching staff over the way they've been treated through uh, this COVID situation. How, what the, what the procedures are, the communication, uh, the wide receivers are freaking out. We got some parents speaking out. We do have some other players uh, that are defending Mike Norvell and his staff, but uh, there's a lot of players and it's more and more, at least as of me sitting down in front of this camera, that are coming out and not liking the way FSU is doing things. And I don't want to take too many shots at FSU, although, I, you know, it's, it's easy to do. Um, but let's just talk about this in the context of where we are in this pandemic as it relates to college sports. Right as of now, we've got two major conferences of the Power, uh, of the power Five that have decided uh, they're not going to play football this fall. Uh, the ACC, the SEC, and the Big 12 are still holding on. But um, I don't, I'm still, I, I still not sure about playing college football in September. But here's why. And listen, this is a trend that's happening not just in college football, not just amongst college students, but the population overall, especially as it relates to the Utes, my cousin Vinny uh, reference, um, which is the Utes are, uh, are finding their voice. And this includes college athletes. And they're really just not going to take your shit anymore. And that's the bottom line. Um, they're, they're figuring out that uh, even though, you know, they're supposed to be good student athletes and they get a scholarship in order to play football or basketball or anything else, that they have rights too as people, as humans. And they shouldn't be treated as cattle or uh, even worse. So I, it's really not surprising. I mean, if you think about, or at least in my own personal situation, when did I start becoming a, uh, an advocate for things? When did I start becoming an activist? When did I start uh, rebelling and speaking out? It is when I got to be about you know, 15, 16, and then it carried my way into college and through college um, is when I was really outspoken on the issues that mattered to me. That was my, I thought that was my right as a, as a youth in America uh, is to express myself. It's, it's about, it's what we do when we come of age. And certainly for some of us, it takes us into our adult lives. Others, you know, they get into other things. But for college athletes, for a long time, college athletes have had literally no voice as it relates to the way they are treated socially, uh, or any way else on campus, right? No union, no whatever. It's just take your scholarship and shut up. Um, and college programs, the way they are run is somewhat militaristic. 
Uh, some of them are run in a very cultish way. Uh, the, the, the coach is uh, almost like a deity. Um, and it just, it's, it's been like that for a long time. But as, as we continue to evolve as a society, that trickles down into the demographic of college athletes, right? Um, more and more young people are protesting about things that they care about. More and more people are speaking out on social media about what they care about. Well, that, you know, like the college typical college athlete, college student athlete, student athlete, uh, is no different than the average 18 or 22 year old in society. So yeah, they're gonna wanna speak out. And especially when like, so the average kid um, that's not, you know, in a athletics program, that's just out there either in school or working or what have you, um, isn't bound by the same structure that college athletes have been. So they're able to speak out. Well, now uh, I think college athletes are taking taking a note of what's going on around the world and saying, listen, I don't have to keep quiet. You need me. I need you, but you need me, right? Star players uh, know that those colleges uh, went above and beyond to recruit them, right? Those colleges need those five-star athletes as much as those five-star athletes need that school. Um, and all right. You need me. Well, guess what? I'm going to have a voice. Then what are you going to do? And uh, I think schools are going to have to start really looking at themselves in the mirror and coaches and staffs and athletic directors and presidents and provosts are going to have to really look at how they are treating college athletes um, because I don't think it's something they can tuck under the covers anymore. And I give props to the players at FSU. I give props to the players at Clemson and all the other colleges where players have spoken up about being treated unfairly, being communicated to, or a lack of communication about policies that are in place that are not safe, or at least in their mindset. Uh, and of course, the coaches are going to come out and defend it and say we're doing everything perfectly and what have you. But um, listen, man, um, I, I, I just think as time goes on that kids are going to be like it used to be kids were so afraid to speak out um, about anything because of the fear of the head coach, the fear of their position coach, the fear of this or that. But now it's getting to the point where it's like society is behind them, right? Like. Uh, there's there's a, a a significant amount of people that are behind these kids having a voice, which makes them less scared of the uh, you know the structure that's in place at their um, institution. And I applaud it, man. Speak out, speak out about what you think is right. Um, colleges need these student athletes, right? You, they want to win games. So if a player comes out and says, I'm being treated unfairly, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to take away the scholarship? Are you going to take away all the receiver scholarships? You're not going to have any – you're Florida State. You're not going to have any wide receivers. What are you going to do? So um, I really uh, really think it's this, – this is a really important time in college athletics. I think it's it, – we might finally get to the point – that all these players are starting to have voices, not only as it relates to the COVID crisis, but uh, minority issues, Black Lives Matter, um, treatment of the student athletes, all of this stuff to the point where we finally see some, some pretty big overhauls on the way we structure college athletics. And I think that would be absolutely great. They, college football, college basketball makes a ton of money. Um, and it's about time that that revenue is used wisely and shared. And uh, I know some of you boomers are out there going, well, they get a scholarship. It's great. They get a scholarship, but they're not allowed to major a, a lot of times in what they want to major in. Um, they certainly uh, don't get the freedoms to do whatever they want on campus. They're held to a different standard than the average 18 to 22 year old. Um, so it's not all rainbows and unicorns for a college athlete. And I, I think it's important they, they have their their voices heard and their rights 
um, confirmed. I think that's really important. So we'll see what happens. Um, I did, you know, just doing a little digging around at the U, I, I think um, – there's a little bit of not to the certainly not anywhere. I think the players love Manny Diaz and love the staff, and I think Manny Diaz is doing a great job at the U of communicating to the players. But I, I still think there is UM gets to hide under this whole private school situation where they don't have to really report anything, and I think there is some resentment about the fact that players may not know if anyone tested positive or may not know X Y and Z about X Y and Z. Did I just use like X, Y, and Z twice? Good. They may not know X, Y, and Z about A, B, and C. Is that better? I don't know if it is. Not, not really sure. Um, so, you know, I, I think there's a little bit of angst at the U, but not enough to, to reach the levels where I'm really concerned. But certainly, um, I think you're going to see more and more and more as days and weeks progress of college athletes speaking out about the things that they care about, the things that are important to them, and they should. Their health is important to them. The way they are treated are, are, is important to them. Equality is important to them. Um, and it and, and, and great, I applaud it. So yeah, I mean, they got a problem up in Tallahassee and I don't know what they're going to do to solve it. They just hired a new coach and he's, it's not going well. So we shall see what happens. But um, listen, if you're a college coach out there, if you're a college athletic director, if you're on a staff, take note of what's happened in Tallahassee and other colleges and um, don't do that. How about that? Seems easy. Meanwhile, um, a little heartened. Uh, just, just real quick, uh, for those of you that don't know, um, I have uh, separated ways from my, uh, yet another job. Um, I was out of media for a while uh, doing something else, separated ways, looking uh, for my next move, but uh, was on the call with, uh, with uh, a guy I know that uh, runs a big business in town and uh, was just really uplifted by him saying, dude, we need you on the radio. We need you somewhere. Uh, you're a special talent, um, and you know I really, I really miss you every day. Um, one, I did not pay him to say that. Two, maybe he was completely lying because I'm not really sure of how great of a talent I am. But three, it did, it did uplift me um, to know there's people out there that that you know think I'm you know something and could do something, and they miss me. So there's that. But um, you know, I'm plotting my next move, taking my time. Um, I have, there's a distinct something I want to do. And I just don't know how to get there and build it. Um, and that's what I'm kind of marinating on. So more on that as days come. But uh, let's, let's see what happens as this Florida State story pans out, right? Players not happy with the way they're being treated. Welcome to 2020. Their voices will be heard. All right, that'll do it for me, The Beast. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you've just watched this video, please share it. Share the video. Send it to your friends. Even if they don't like me, just send it to them anyways. All right, I'll see you when I see you. Peace.